Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on static equilibrium. In the previous tutorial, I left you guys with this question that I asked you guys to, to try out in preparation for, for this video. So I hope you guys had, uh, had time to go through this question. I hope you tried it out. Thumbs up to those who were able to, to get it right. There's another question that I left you guys with. Um, I hope you were able to work it out. The concepts really to that question are similar to the ones we use to work out question four. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll, I'll leave a link to that uh, that video in the description. You can find it there and see and see it. There's a question at the far end, which uh, which I found from an exam paper. So you guys can try can try that. So if if you struggle with that question, you can just uh, get in touch with me or leave a comment. And then I'll give you a hint or something. And if it proves to be too difficult for everyone, then you can see if we can make a video on it as well. But then let's see how we're supposed to work out this. So ideally here, what the question is asking us to find is, um, asking us to answer one simple question. Is the friction here sufficient enough to hold this system in equilibrium? So they want us to show that the static friction of force between block A and the surface can be, uh, can be hold the system in equilibrium for a weight of block A given for a weight of block A given, okay? So they're saying the weight of this, given the, the, frictional, the frictional force of the surface, is it able to withhold the system in equilibrium? Can we overcome this, this weight that is this side, which is trying to obviously pull this system down onto this side? Now, how do we do that? Well, firstly, we, should, we, we want to account for all these forces. So the first question we want to ask is, well, what is this frictional force that is gripping this object to the ground? And the next thing that you might want to answer is, okay, this weight that is uh, suspended here, uh, through the strings, it leads to creation of a tension T1. That is trying to pull this, uh, this block A to the right. So then what is this, this tension T1? After you find what the tension T1 is, and then you also uh, calculate what the force of friction is, then you're going to compare these two. See, if tension one is greater than the force of friction, then we'll see this block moving towards the right. But if t tension one is less than the friction of force holding this block to the surface, then the block A will remain mounted in this position. So that's what we have to, we have to show. We have to show that the force of friction is greater than uh, tension one. Because if it is not like this, then the system is going to move towards the right. Okay, now the first step, we can easily calculate the friction. Now, what are we given in the question? Okay, so um, I think there's one thing that, uh, that we left out in this question, which is the coefficient of static friction. So let's just get that very quickly. Okay, so in the question, the question of static friction is supposed to be taken as 0 0.3. So we can just include that as well. So that's 0 0.3. So I hope you guys were able to, uh, to check the original question. So this is the coefficient of static friction. Let me just write it in full. So that's new is equal to 0 0.3. Okay, now, so since we know what new is, um, let's start. Let's start with um, closing up um, the system at block A, so that we see what is actually happening there. So, if we look at uh, block A, uh, just the way it is, what we just want to see there is what the force of friction is. So, how do we do that? Well, there is a relationship between the coefficient of static friction and frictional force, and that is given by this, the force normal. So from here, we see that when we cross multiply, we get an expression for the force of friction, which is given by the product of the coefficient of static friction times the force normal. Then there's another question. Well, what is this force normal? So if we're just to isolate that object, uh, block A, and then just look at the way it is, we observe that we have its weight going down 90 newtons. Then we have the normal force is going to act perpendicular to the surface going up. So this is what we are calling the normal force. So we see that the sum of forces in the Y for block A 
it's supposed to be equal to zero because the object is not moving up. That's just a fact. Um, then what comes up or what remains is uh, Fn is going up, positive, 90 is going down, negative, equal to zero, implying that the normal force is also equal to 90 newtons. So from here, when we substitute, now what we have is 0 0.3 multiplying 90 newtons. And what we get when we do this is 27 newtons. Okay, so now we found what our force of friction is. Uh, uh, now the question is, what is the tension T1 here pulling this object to, to the right? So let's, let's come this side. Now, what we want to start by doing is we're going to close it up here. And then the question will be, what are the forces acting on this system? Well, we identify T3 and uh, 15 newtons, the weight of, uh, of the block. So if we get that, so again, we're taking up to be positive here. So implying that we have T3. So let's just go back here, that's T3. So we have T3 going up, positive minus the 15 going down, negative, this is equal to zero. So once we have this, the next thing is going to be T3 is equal to 15 newtons. So once we found this, then what do we do with it? The goal again is to find what T1 is. So we start from here, we go up with it. Now, now we have what T3 is. Next thing is we close it up here. So the next thing is we want to find what T1 is, but then how do we find it? Well, we can only find it if we know what T2 is. Let's draw that junction and see how it looks. So that junction now, we have T1 this side, we have T3 down, so this is T1, and then here we have T3, and then T2 is at an angle like this. Now the thing is, to find T1, we're going to relate it to the X component of T2. But this X component, um, so to get the, the X component here, this is T2 in X. So um, we have to resolve the vector T2. So you guys, I hope by now you know how to resolve vectors. If you're still having problems with resolving vectors, you can check out um, my video on how to resolve vectors. I'm going to, 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 to leave a link in the description. So um, now this is going, of course, it's supposed to be, it's going to end up as T2 um, cos the angle. And the angle is given as 45. So this is going to be T2 cos 45. Now, while the Y component, which is this side, you can still write it here. So let me use, let me use um, a blue for, for these for these components. So this is the component, the X component of T2, and then this is the Y component of, of T2. You can write it here, or you can write it here, it's still the same. So this is T2 in Y, and then this is given by uh, T2 sine 45, okay? So let me just write it properly somewhere else. So this is T2Y, T2 in Y comes out as T2 sine 45. So again, if you don't know how, how I, I resolve this, you can check out my video on um, how to resolve these, these vectors. So we see that if we relate the, the X components directly, we'll have two things we don't know, T1 itself and T2. So we start first by relating the Y components since we already know what T3 is, we'll easily get what T2 from here, then use T2 to get what T1 is. So we see that here there are only two forces in the X, in the Y, I mean. So we have T3 going down, and then we have the Y component. So we have, what we have going down is T3, and then this is the Y component of T2. So this was T2 sine 45. In this, we found it was equal to, to 15. So from here, since T2Y is going up positive, T3 is going down negative, this is equal to zero. So once we are here, 
Now this we can substitute the formula here. This is T2 sine 45 is equal to, so this can go the other side becomes positive, that is 15. Then finally T2 is equals to 15 over sine 45. So this is what gives us T2, what gives us T2. You can simplify this so you can leave it like this. So from here now, we can go to the x-axis. So if we go back to our junction and look at what we have in the x-axis. So the diagram that we drew here, this is the junction we're currently working with. We've just finished analyzing the y-axis. We came up with the expression for T2. In the x-axis now, we have two forces, T1 itself and the x component of T2. The x component of T2 is going to the right, so it's going to be positive. The T1 is going to the left, it's going to be negative. So if we sum the forces in the x and equate them to zero, so we have sum of forces in the x supposed to equal to zero. So what we have is T2 in the x positive minus T1, and then this is supposed to be equal to zero. So we see that T2 x is equal to T1. So from here, you can write starting with T1. Now, what is T2 in the x? This is T2, but now we have cos 45. So again, we already show, uh, I showed how this is. So T2 found it already. T2 is this expression. So we can get this expression and substitute it where we have T2. And now what we have is T1 is equals to 15 over, this is sine 45. And then this is all T2. Now it's multiplying cos 45. So from trigonometry, you guys are not, you should remember that sine 45 and cos 45 are equal. Or you can use a calculator to still come out just fine. So if you if you respect the fact that they're equal, T1 comes out as 15 newtons. So from here now, having obtained what T1 is, remember now we're looking at block A. So we want to look at block A and examine its behavior. So let's look at where it is. So we've seen that the system brings it such that we have T1 pulling this side. And this is 15 newtons. But the force gripping it to the ground, it's, it's, uh, it, it's so large such that it has a value of about 27 newtons. So from here, you see that it's, it's obvious that the gripping force um, acting on the surface, maybe when I write it like this, it might, you guys might, might interpret it as something that is, as is trying to make it move. So this is just a gripping force on the surface. It's not really trying to move the object. That's the strength holding this object down. So clearly you tell that, you can tell that the grip on the surface, it's greater than the force trying to make it move. So because of that, we conclude that um, this object, the frictional force uh, on the surface, it's large enough to keep this object in equilibrium. So to answer our question here, we're the saying sure that the static frictional force between the block A and surface can hold the system. Uh, this is all we have to do. We just have to show that the force of friction was greater than T1. And that's all. So I hope you guys were able to follow this. It's really something straightforward. Um, yeah, it's kind of kind of direct and it should take you just less than five minutes to work it out. Yeah, maybe I might have taken longer just because of explaining. So for your practice, you guys can try out this question. I found it in a test paper as well. It's, it's similar, actually almost everything is the same except that uh, maybe they have one or two more additional things um, that you have to that you have to keep in mind. So um, yeah, you guys can try it out. You can comment your, your, your answers in the, in the comment section. Let's see what you find. It'd be interesting to, to, get, to get a response from you. I'd like to hear what you're finding. So this is just uh, for you guys to practice. And then for the next video, what we're going to work on is going to be this question. This is going to be our question six in the series. You guys are free to try it on in readiness for, uh, for our video. All right, you guys, that's all for, for this tutorial session. Um, hope you found this helpful. Feel free to share it with your friends. Uh, leave a like if you found this video helpful. Um, yeah, this was your tutor. We'll see you in the next session.